Welcome to Awakening You channel. If you appreciate what we do, please support us. Thank you. Dear ones. I am Archangel Michael. I sincerely hope that you have not forgotten today's task, which was to keep the day without a sweet taste in the mouth. But I need to compliment this task. Many didn't make it. So, to those who didn't make it, I say this, don't feel defeated, don't feel belittled. The degree of dependence, the degree of addiction for each of you is different. Many managed to do it without any problem, others really didn't manage it, so it's like I've been saying here, the tasks are supposed to become habits, but as I preach here, for now everything is in balance. There's no point in wanting to be perfect because you won't be able to do it. So it's all very bland, try to avoid sugar gradually, so that your bodies get used to it little by little. There's no point in having it all at once. There is a dependence, this is no joke, it is a fact and if you completely stop eating sugar, you may even get sick. So it's like this, take days, choose and resolve, today I will consume as little sugar as possible. And with that, you will lose your dependence on this substance. It's not easy, my brothers, I understand that it's not. Then many are wondering why I removed the honey too. Since honey is natural, it's because you have to lose your addiction to sweets, the sweet taste, not sugar. That's the point. This includes sweeteners that are highly bad and harmful to your health. No, don't tell me that they are made from fruit sugars or natural sugars. Stop, they were manipulated, they were manufactured, so there is nothing natural about them. So the idea here is that you lose this sensitivity to sweet taste. Yes, you can keep the fruits. If you want to eat something sweet, make fruit juice. Ah, but then I'll never be able to eat a sweet, a piece of cake, a pie again. Look what you think. You guys did great, conveniently surrounded by these foods, and you don't see yourselves stopping eating them. I know it's difficult. I understand, but my proposal is not to take it completely away from you. What I've always said is balance, balance. If you slowly take your taste away from sweets, the time will come when you will no longer feel that appeal, that desire for sweets. You can eat cake, as long as it is sugar-free and contains fruit sugar. Bananas result in tasty cakes with their own sugar, the pineapple, the orange. If the fruit is sweet, anything made with it will be sweet, without having to use sugar. I haven't reached this class of foods yet. So my brothers, it is a habit that I would like you to do, little by little. Try to adapt to the taste of things, without sugar, so that you can, little by little, stop the addiction, because that is an addiction, not a necessity. You have been taught that you need sugars, fats, Proteins. Sugars white sugar, fats oils and margarines, proteins animal meats. All wrong. Because you have sugars in fruits, fats in foods. You have foods that are extremely beneficial for health and contain fat, the one who gives the olive oil, wants healthier fat. So why use another fat? Why eat animal fat, which is the most poisonous of all? Proteins. You have leaves, vegetables that have proteins, you don't need animal protein. So you have been deluded that you need all this. No, don't think that I'm going to take everything away at once, and in fact, I need to say one more thing, I'm not ordering anyone to do anything, I'm making a suggestion, whoever thinks it is valid, who really wants to cleanse their aura of all the stains that these foods bring, very well, do it. Now, oh no, that's nonsense, I'm not going to do anything like that, perfect, no problem at all, no problem at all. Keep eating the way you always have. But I can guarantee you that those who try to get rid of these addictions are starting to gain speed in their journey, and those of you who can't, it's not that you aren't walking, you are, but you will continue at the speed you are at today. So, the decision is up to each person. 
you do what you want. No problem. No problem at all. So today the topic is to talk about this point of nutrition, and no, I'm not going to start the week talking about the 8th charter. I'm not in a hurry, I'm not in a hurry at all. I would like to comment a little more on where we have come with these letters. There are several groups of people who are reading these letters. Those groups that read and compare with what is written in their books, and do not understand why everything that is being said there is not said in the religious book that you use. So, I'm going to go back in time a little. Why did Sananda always speak in parables? Parables are ways you say things which lead to many interpretations. Each person will understand according to their knowledge, with their heart. Why did he speak in parables? You, for those who are reading the letters remember, that when he returned from the desert, he came back with all the enlightenment, all the knowledge that he needed. And he tried to convey all of this to the people, but no one believed his words, because everyone knew that there was a religion to follow and that it was extremely punitive. So, how can I stop believing in that God who punished me, who hurt me if I didn't toe the line, to listen to someone who has just arrived, saying a lot of different things. And people didn't accept what Sananda said. So he began to preach through parables, so that people would think about it, and everyone would understand in their own way. Then many may ask, but why did he speak that way? not say exactly what he heard. But he spoke, he said what he knew, and everyone laughed, they didn't believe him, they couldn't understand how that being said so much nonsense, so much that wasn't true. Then he realized that he wasn't going to be able to put into people's minds what he had learned, what he had absorbed in the desert. So he thought it would be better to put it in parables, because then people would at least listen and try to find a way. And it was in this way that, unfortunately, men took advantage, to place their understandings there, because as it was a parable, everyone understood it in their own way. Then each one began to encourage what Sananda had said, in his own way, in the way he thought was right. And then came the distortions. No, Sananda did not write parables to create religions, he would never do that, because he never wanted separation. He always wanted unity, love between peoples. The man distorted everything, the man took advantage of that, I could even say, Sananda's innocent word, to put what he had said in his own way. Going so far as to say that God ordered people to kill, that God was conniving with deaths, with killings, simply because some people didn't believe in what was said. So, that's why the current letters could never be revealed at that time because he tried to reveal them, but the people didn't listen, and he knew that only in the following millennia would he be able to make people understand. So everything has the right time. There is another group that understands that the letters could only be released now, but that do not agree with anything that is written there. They want to assert exactly what is in their religious books, and compare what is said here, what is said in the letters, with what is in their books. For these groups I will repeat what I have been saying here for a long time, their religious books were not written by Sananda, they were not written by Muhammad, or by other beings of light. Books were written by the minds of those who lived with them. So there's a lot of the mind of whoever wrote it, and what's worse, there's what was manipulated over time. So don't try to compare, don't try to take excerpts from your religious books and compare them with what I say or with what Sananda says in the letters, because a lot of things you won't find an echo, because that was written by men. It is a shame that you are so reluctant to understand this, that your religious books are not a complete source of truth. There is a lot of manipulation there to make everything happen as they had predicted. And there is a third group, there is a third group, which is reading the letters and is incorporating everything that is being said there, and even better, is feeling Sananda's energy. So what can I say to you? What I have already said here, these letters are not to be read and left aside. The guidance is to read the letters, separate the points you don't understand and do exactly as Sananda instructed, 
open yourself in meditation and ask him to show you, to do for you, to help you understand what is written there. And this will definitely happen. Sananda knows each one of you who is reading the letters, because these letters are like a direct path to him. So each one who opens the letters, but who receives them with heart, with understanding, with trust, with certainty that what is being said there is the truth, creates a direct connection with Sananda. And no, don't be surprised if you start to dream, start to see some kind of connection with it. Because he is so pleased to do this, to show you that you are truly connected to him. Many, at first, think that letters are difficult to obtain, they are, precisely because of the need for you to delve deeper into the subject. If he simply wrote something there that you fully understood, what would happen? You would read it and leave it alone. So once again, he wants you to go deeper, to understand what is there, but don't understand it by hearing it from someone else's mind, understand it by hearing it from yourself. So this is what he suggests, meditate, and call me, because I will explain exactly the point where you didn't understand. So understand that there are no intermediaries in this, he will come directly to explain to each one of you what you didn't understand. So there's no need to despair, ah, I didn't understand anything. Okay, that's great that you didn't understand. Now, it's also not, I don't understand and leaving it there, because then that connection weakens, and you end up going back to the same point you were in, before reading the letters. These letters are like a path, a road. A road that runs parallel to the road you are following today towards ascension. It's as if you could, as you really like images, I'm going to make an image for you. It's as if you are on those conveyor belts that take you faster, so you are on your walk, on that slow road, and then you start to read the letters and delve deeper into them. So what happens? You are taken off the road you are on and placed on another, on this conveyor belt that keeps rolling and taking you faster. Then you don't understand, you don't try to understand, so you go back to the old road. Every time you engage with the charter and you want to learn, you want to go deeper, and you study about it, and you understand and you learn, during this time, you are on that conveyor belt, which is taking you to ascension much faster. So every time you stop, you return to the old road, and go back to walking with a snail's pace, as you were, or rather, as you are in relation to the treadmill. Then you go back to studying get back on that treadmill and walk some more. So this is what you gain by studying these letters, but studying for a full understanding, studying for a deep understanding, for a complete understanding, not a superficial understanding. So my brothers don't give up. Don't give up on this path. The path is not easy, no, it is not, understanding is not easy. But if you follow what Sananda says, you will be able to understand, you will be able to absorb exactly what he means, and you will become more and more enlightened and you will get to the front faster. That's what I said here a few videos ago, Sananda is not a being to talk about quickly. I could spend a year talking about him here, and I would have something to talk about, because he is a complete being. When we finish the letters, I will continue talking about Sananda, and you will understand a lot why he did a lot of things, why he came to this planet and did what he did, to implant this Christ consciousness in the hearts of each one of you. And to bring your planet to the point it is today. So for a long time, we will still talk about him, and this will give you time to make new decisions, to really read, to really meditate on it, and learn what he is talking about. My brothers, much of what he says there, I was already telling you. I hope that each of you really absorbs what is being said there. It is important for each of you on your journey. So follow along, it can be slow, it's okay, the important thing is that you understand, that you read and understand what he meant. Tomorrow then, I will talk about letter number 8. I am Archangel Michael. I'm here to help you on this journey.
to bring about the ways in which you can walk faster.